at the dock, Chief. All right. <laughs> the casting process for the 1958 TV series 77 Sunset Strip was a meticulous task, with each character requiring a unique blend of charm, wit, and toughness. The show's producers, Roy Huggins and Leonard Freeman, were determined to find the perfect cast. For the role of private detective Stuart Bailey, they chose Ephraim Zimbalist Jr. his background in theater, and his suave demeanor made him an ideal fit. Zimbalist's audition showcased his ability to balance the character's toughness with a touch of vulnerability. The character of Jeff Spencer, another private detective, was given to Roger Smith. Smith, a former football player, brought a rugged charm to the role. His chemistry with Zimbalist was undeniable, making them a formidable duo on screen. The role of Kuki, the parking lot attendant and amateur detective, was initially meant to be a small one. However, after seeing Edward Bynes audition, the producers decided to expand the character. Bynes' charisma and comedic timing were instrumental in making Kuki a fan favorite. The female lead, Suzanne Fabry, was played by Jacqueline Beer. Her French heritage and elegant beauty made her a standout choice. Despite being a newcomer, Beer's audition demonstrated her ability to hold her own against the seasoned male leads. The casting of 77 Sunset Strip was a careful process of auditions, chemistry tests, and pivotal moments. Each actor was chosen for their unique strengths, creating a dynamic and engaging ensemble. The result was a show that captivated audiences and left a lasting impact on television history. Number. Oh, I get you. I'll give the rest of it to you in a sprint. You go south out of town, a mile and a sixth. The director of 77 Sunset Strip, Roger Kale, brought the story to life with his unique vision and style. He was heavily influenced by film noir, which is reflected in the show's moody lighting and dramatic camera angles. Kale's approach was to create a sense of tension and excitement, which he achieved through fast-paced editing and a focus on action. Collaboration was key to Kale's success. He worked closely with the cast and crew to ensure that everyone was on the same page and that the show's vision was being executed effectively. He encouraged the actors to bring their own ideas to the table and was always open to improvisation. Kale's style was characterized by his use of close-ups to capture the emotions of the characters and his preference for long takes, which allowed the actors to really get into their roles. He also made use of location shooting, which gave the show a sense of realism and grit. In terms of creative influences, Kale was inspired by the work of directors like Orson Welles and Billy Wilder. He admired their ability to tell compelling stories while also pushing the boundaries of what was possible in terms of filmmaking technique. Overall, Kale's directorial vision for 77 Sunset Strip was instrumental in bringing the show to life. His unique style and approach to storytelling helped to create a captivating and enduring television series that continues to be enjoyed by audiences today. How come the court martial found him guilty? He had a defense counsel. Walter Lockery, a member of... 77 Sunset Strip was a popular TV series that aired from 1958 to 1964. It followed the adventures of two private detectives, Stuart Bailey and Jeff Spencer, who worked out of an office located on Sunset Strip in Los Angeles. The show was known for its fast-paced action, snappy dialogue, and attractive cast. But there's more to 77 Sunset Strip than meets the eye. Did you know that the show's theme song, theme from 77 Sunset Strip, was a hit single in its own right, reaching number two on the Billboard charts in 1959? Or that the show's creator, Roy Huggins, based the character of Stuart Bailey on his own experiences as a private detective? 77 Sunset Strip has endured as a symbol of the TV industry for many reasons. Its innovative use of rock and roll music, its stylish depiction of Los Angeles, and its charismatic cast all contributed to its success. The show's influence can still be seen today, and everything from modern detective shows to the way Los Angeles is portrayed in popular culture. Do you have a favorite memory or personal experience related to 77 Sunset Strip? We'd love to hear about it in the comments below. In the meantime, stay tuned for more fascinating facts about this classic TV series. Closes down. Of course I will. Right to the end. The production of the 1958 TV series, 77 Sunset Strip, took place primarily in Hollywood, California. The show's main location was the fictional detective agency, 77 Sunset Strip, 
which was filmed on a set designed to resemble a chic, modern office in a Spanish-style building. The set, detailed with stylish furniture and state-of-the-art technology of the time, created an atmosphere of sophistication and excitement. The series also utilized various real-life locations in the Los Angeles area, such as the famous Sunset Strip, Beverly Hills, and Santa Monica. These exterior shots helped establish the show's distinctive West Coast vibe and noir aesthetic. One logistical challenge faced during filming was coordinating the schedules of the show's main actors, Ephraim Zimbalist Jr., Roger Smith, and Ed Byans. To ensure smooth production, the crew had to carefully plan shooting schedules and episode storylines around their availability. In terms of innovative techniques, 77 Sunset Strip was one of the first TV series to extensively use split-screen effects. This allowed for multiple storylines to be shown simultaneously, adding a layer of complexity and visual interest to the show. The series also made use of then cutting-edge technology, such as early videotape recorders to pre-record scenes and dialogue, improving overall production efficiency. Life, Mr. Bailey. One of mine is foretelling by statistics. The Private Eye Show 77 Sunset Strip, which aired from 1958 to 1964, was known for its hip and cool vibe during the first five seasons. The series, produced by Warner Brothers, was a hit as a light-hearted detective show with a touch of comedy. However, the spin-off series Bourbon Street Beat and New Orleans Ambience, which included black characters, was not as successful. Richard Long's character, Rex Randolph, was moved from Bourbon Street Beat to 77 Sunset Strip, making him the first TV character to transition between series. Warner Brothers attempted to replicate the success with Surfside 6 in Miami Beach and Hawaiian Eye in Honolulu, but they didn't catch on. The show's cast faced some bad luck, with Richard Long having a heart attack during the third season and Roger Smith suffering a stroke during the fourth season which led to the development of myasthenia gravis, ending his acting career. Despite this, Smith went on to become a successful writer and off-screen producer for his wife, Anne Margaret. By the sixth season, the entire cast, except for Ephraim Zimbalist Jr., had left, and the series took on a Jack Webbish tone before being canceled. One of the show's most memorable episodes was Once Upon a Caper, written by Roger Smith where each private investigator explained to Rex Randolph how they were the one who made the firm, and the others were just incompetent. This episode showcased the series' ability to make fun of itself, making it a great show. Overall, 77 Sunset Strip was a hit during its first five seasons, providing a unique blend of humor and detective work that resonated with audiences. It wasn't easy, sir, uh, until I checked the county records and looked up your property. After that, it was a... The creation of a film score and soundtrack is a crucial aspect of storytelling as it enhances the narrative and emotional tone of the production. In the case of the 1958 TV series 77 Sunset Strip, the music played a significant role in setting the scene for this detective drama. The show's theme song, 77 Sunset Strip, was composed by Mac David with music by Jerry Livingston and lyrics by Sammy Kahn. The catchy tune, performed by guitarist Tommy Garrett, became a hit single and helped establish the show's cool, laid-back vibe. The score for 77 Sunset Strip was primarily the work of composer John Borsma. Borsma's music, which featured a blend of jazz and easy listening styles, perfectly complemented the show's Los Angeles setting and the laid-back attitudes of its main characters. Borsma's score was designed to enhance the show's dramatic moments while also providing a sense of place and atmosphere. The music was often used to punctuate the action heightening the tension during chase scenes or adding a touch of romance to a tender moment. The use of jazz music in 77 Sunset Strip was a deliberate choice, as it was a popular genre in the late 1950s and helped to establish the show's contemporary feel. The music also reflected the show's focus on the lives of private detectives working in the city, with its cool, sophisticated sound embodying the glamour and excitement of urban life. In addition to the score, 77 Sunset Strip also featured a number of popular songs from the era, further enhancing the show's appeal. These songs were carefully selected to complement the narrative and emotional tone of each episode, with the music often used to underscore the characters' emotions or to provide a backdrop for the show's many party scenes. Overall, the music in 77 Sunset Strip played a vital role in establishing the show's unique tone and atmosphere. The score and soundtrack 
carefully crafted by a team of talented composers and musicians, helped to bring the world of the show to life and ensured that it remains a beloved classic of television history. But precarious. I don't need a lawyer to tell me that. How precarious. In the popular 1950s TV series, 77 Sunset Strip, the character of Stuart Bailey, played by Ephraim Zimbalist Jr., had an interesting history before appearing on the show. Originally, Bailey was featured in a novel and three short stories written by series creator Roy Huggins. He first appeared on screen in the movie I Love Trouble, portrayed by Franchot Tone. The series was sponsored by several well-known brands, including Anison Aspirin, Sertz Breath Mints with Ritzen, and Salem Cigarettes, which were frequently featured during commercial breaks. Interestingly, Dino's Lodge, a popular hangout spot in the series, was shown in every episode. However, despite its prominence, Dean Martin, who owned the lodge, never made an appearance on the show, nor was he even mentioned. This detail adds an intriguing layer to the show's history and its production. The hospital. The son was dead and alive. One of the most iconic scenes in the 1958 TV series 77 Sunset Strip is the opening title sequence, which features a dynamic jazz score and a fast-paced montage of the show's main characters, Stu Bailey and Jeff Spencer, driving through the streets of Los Angeles in a sleek convertible. The sequence sets the tone for the entire series, establishing its cool, stylish, and sophisticated vibe. Director Alexander Singer and cinematographer Philip Lathrop expertly capture the energy and glamour of 1950s Hollywood, using sweeping crane shots and dramatic lighting to highlight the city's iconic landmarks and glamorous nightlife. The performances of Leeds Ephraim Zimbalist Jr. and Roger Smith are also noteworthy as they exude confidence and charisma in every scene. According to Singer, the opening sequence was designed to be a visual and auditory representation of the show's themes of excitement, danger, and adventure. We wanted to create a sense of urgency and movement and I think we achieved that with the use of fast cuts, dynamic camera angles, and the catchy jazz score. Another memorable scene is the episode Echo of a Golden Horn, in which Stu and Jeff are hired to protect a famous jazz musician from a dangerous stalker. The episode features several standout moments, including a thrilling car chase through the winding streets of L.A., and a tense confrontation between the detectives and the stalker in a dimly lit jazz club. Cinematographer Lathrop recalls, We wanted to create a sense of tension and unease in the jazz club scene, so we used low-key lighting and long shadows to create a moody, atmospheric setting. The use of smoke and mirrors also added to the sense of mystery and danger. The performances in this episode are also top-notch, with Zimbalist and Smith delivering nuanced and believable portrayals of tough, resourceful detectives. The chemistry between the two leads is also palpable, adding to the overall appeal of the show. Overall, the iconic scenes in 77 Sunset Strip are characterized by their stylish direction, strong performances, and evocative cinematography. The show's impact on audiences can still be felt today, as it helped to define the classic detective genre and pave the way for countless other shows and films in the years to come. Dino's Lodge, a restaurant once owned by Dean Martin, was a popular spot in Los Angeles at 8524 Sunset Boulevard before its demolition in 1989. The TV series 77 Sunset Strip, produced by Warner Brothers for ABC, featured some inside jokes about other Warner Brothers productions for ABC. For instance, Kooky, played by Ed Byans, was unaware that Will Hutchins was the star of Sugarfoot and was seen reading a TV guide with the Maverick stars James Garner and Jack Kelly on the cover. Joe DeSantis, who acted alongside Frank Sinatra in the made-for-TV movie contract on Cherry Street, shared a memorable moment with Sinatra. Sinatra commented that DeSantis should have played the Godfather, a role DeSantis cherished until the end of his days. These anecdotes provide a glimpse into the camaraderie and friendly rivalry among actors and producers in the entertainment industry during that time. Remember, no work on Saturday night. Honey, we've just made up. The 1958 TV series 77 Sunset Strip had a significant cultural and social impact. The show, with its stylish private detectives, glamorous settings, and catchy theme song, resonated with audiences seeking entertainment and escapism during the post-war era. 
Set in Los Angeles, the series showcased a modern, urban lifestyle that captivated viewers, contributing to the popularization of the city detective genre. The show's distinctive blend of mystery, action, and humor influenced pop culture, inspiring numerous imitations and parodies. Moreover, 77 Sunset Strip tackled relevant social and cultural themes. For instance, it featured diverse characters, including the Japanese-American detective Kato, played by Bruce Lee, which challenged racial stereotypes and promoted inclusivity. The series also showcased the latest fashion trends and music, further resonating with audiences and influencing popular culture. Its emphasis on style, coupled with its fast-paced storytelling, embodied the spirit of the late 1950s and early 1960s. In addition, 77 Sunset Strip contributed to discussions on relevant social themes. For example, it addressed issues related to crime, justice, and the role of private detectives in society. While not overtly political, the series reflected the social concerns of its time, providing a platform for audiences to engage with these topics. Overall, 77 Sunset Strip left an indelible mark on television history, shaping popular culture and contributing to discussions on relevant social and cultural themes. Well, I know why you were here this morning, Mr. Spencer. Oh? I'll give The jazz band, the Frankie Ortega Trio, was a frequent presence on the TV show 77 Sunset Strip, often performing at the Dino's launch segments. The trio, signed with Warner Brothers Records, was a popular act at the real-life Dino's in the 1950s and 60s. In a surprising turn of events, the network gave creative control of the show's final season to Jack Webb and William Conrad, who then fired the entire cast, except for Ephraim Zimbalis Jr. They transformed his character, Stuart Bailey, into an international spy. The name of one of the show's directors, George Wagner, is often spelled with double uppercase GG in the credits, which is thought to be a hidden riddle, as the letter G is the seventh letter of the alphabet, making GG equal to 77. However, Wagner never confirmed this assumption. Because she was always forgetting it. Uh, when she started hiding it out there. The 1958 TV series 77 Sunset Strip received mixed reviews from critics, but it was a major hit with audiences. The show, which followed the adventures of two private detectives in Los Angeles, was praised for its slick style and catchy theme song. However, some critics criticized it for its shallow characters and formulaic plots. Despite these criticism, 77 Sunset Strip was a massive success for Warner Brothers Television, and it helped to establish the studio as a major player in the world of television production. The show was also a ratings hit, consistently ranking in the top 20 programs during its run. 77 Sunset Strip received several award nominations, including an Emmy Award nomination for Outstanding Dramatic Series in 1959. The show's stars, Ephraim Zimbalist Jr. and Roger Smith, also received individual award nominations for their performances. The success of 77 Sunset Strip had a significant impact on the careers of those involved. Ephraim Zimbalist Jr. became a household name and went on to star in several other successful TV series. Roger Smith also became a popular actor and later married the legendary actress Anne Margaret. The show's creator, Roy Huggins, also went on to have a successful career in television, creating and producing several other popular series, including The Fugitive and Maverick. Overall, while 77 Sunset Strip may not have been a critical favorite, its success with audiences and award nominations helped to establish the careers of many of those involved and solidified Warner Brothers Television's position as a major player in the television industry. Hey, Dad. Who was the well-heeled cat? Looked like one of the mushroom people. In the sixth season of 77 Sunset Strip, the office of protagonist Stuart Bailey moved to the historic Bradbury Building in Los Angeles, California. Bailey, played by Ephraim Zimbalist Jr., drove a stylish Thunderbird. During the final eight episodes, his secretary changed to Hannah, portrayed by Joan Staley, adding a new dynamic to the series. These shifts in location, transportation, and personnel brought fresh elements to the show's narrative. Good morning. The 1958 TV series, 77 Sunset Strip, was a groundbreaking show that brought a new level of excitement to the detective genre. The cast and crew faced many challenges during the filming, but they also shared some memorable moments. 
Ephraim Zimbalist Jr., who played Stuart Bailey, was known for his meticulous preparation. He would often arrive on set before anyone else, poring over the script and making notes. Zimbalist's dedication paid off, as he delivered a nuanced performance that captivated audiences. The chemistry between Zimbalist and his co-star, Roger Smith, who played Jeff Spencer, was undeniable. They spent countless hours together, rehearsing their lines and discussing their characters' motivations. Their friendship extended off-screen, and they often spent time together with their families. The show's producer, Roy Huggins, was a stickler for detail. He insisted on authenticity in every aspect of the production, from the cars the characters drove to the clothes they wore. Huggins even hired a former detective to consult on the show, ensuring that the stories were plausible and the dialogue was authentic. Despite the attention to detail, there were still some hiccups along the way. In one episode, a car chase scene went awry when the stunt driver lost control and crashed into a prop tree. Fortunately, no one was hurt, and the scene was reshot with a new stunt driver. The show's theme song, 77 Sunset Strip, became a massive hit, reaching number two on the Billboard charts. The song was performed by the band, The Three Sons, and became synonymous with the show. Behind the scenes, the cast and crew faced long hours and tight deadlines. Despite the challenges, they remained dedicated to delivering a high-quality show that would captivate audiences. Their hard work paid off, as 77 Sunset Strip became one of the most popular shows of the era. They're all set to grab Krieger. Well, you certainly wrapped it up. Well, they'd be wrapping me up, and I don't mean figuratively. The ownership dispute over 77 Sunset Strip led to Roy Huggins leaving Warner Brothers, despite him conceiving the show and creating the character Stuart Bailey. The pilot episode was released theatrically and written by someone else, causing legal complications as the writer was working for hire. 77 Sunset Strip's success prompted ABC to create similar detective series, Bourbon Street Beat, Hawaiian Eye, Surfside Six, and The Roaring Twenties. The character Cookie, played by Ed Byans, gained immense popularity, leading to a 1959 record album and the hit single Cookie. Cookie, lend me your comb with Connie Stevens, which reached number four on the popular charts. Described as a man in his early 30s, six feet tall, weighs about 180. The 1958 TV series 77 Sunset Strip, with its blend of private eye drama and laid-back California vibe, left a significant mark on film history. Its innovative use of location shooting, contemporary music, and snappy dialogue set it apart from earlier detective shows. This innovative approach influenced future filmmaking, particularly in the crime and detective genres. 77 Sunset Strip's impact can be seen in various subsequent works. The series style and format inspired shows like Hawaiian Eye, Surfside Six, and Bourbon Street Beat, creating a new subgenre of detective shows set in glamorous locations. The series also influenced the creation of the Magnum P.I. and the Rockford Files in the 1970s and 1980s. Moreover, 77 Sunset Strip's distinctive visual style, featuring bright colors, convertibles, and beach settings, became synonymous with the idealized image of the 1960s California lifestyle. This image has been revisited and reinterpreted in numerous films and TV shows, including The O.C., Baywatch, and La La Land. In addition, the series' use of popular music is part of its narrative, featuring performances by artists like Connie Stevens and Elvis Presley helped pave the way for the integration of music into TV and film storytelling. This approach can be seen in later works like Miami Vice and American Graffiti. Overall, 77 Sunset Strip's lasting legacy lies in its innovative approach to storytelling, its impact on future filmmaking, and its influence on the representation of California and popular music in film and television. Hello. Hello, Natalie Stu Bailey. Can I wake you up? In the late 1950s, the popular television series 77 Sunset Strip featured a group of detectives working from offices located in a building that, in reality, housed the Mary Webb Davis Modeling Agency. The agency's front door, the driveway of Dino's Lodge, and a portion of the restaurant were recreated on a Warner Brothers soundstage, where most scenes taking place in that area were filmed. Interestingly, the doorknob's position on the soundstage version of the door was moved from the left to the right in later episodes. The series saw the addition of the Rex Randolph character, originally from Bourbon Street Beat in 1960, 
marking a historic moment as the first time a character was moved from one established series to another. Actor Richard Long portrayed Rex Randolph. Additionally, Roger Smith, a cast member of 77 Sunset Strip, left the show in 1963 after doctors discovered a blood clot in his brain. The building where the detective's offices were located no longer stands today, having been replaced by the Tiffany Theater, which has also since been demolished. Mister? Yeah. Doesn't it? In the late 1950s, the popular TV series 77 Sunset Strip faced a tragic loss. Actor Dennis Taylor, who played the role of Jody Dean, drowned in 1958 during a vacation in Hawaii. His death was a shock to both the cast and the audience, leaving a sad mark in the show's history. The series itself was known for its innovative style, blending elements of detective and drama genres. It followed the adventures of two private detectives, Stu Bailey and Jeff Spencer, who worked out of an office located on the famous Sunset Strip in Los Angeles. The show's success was due in part to its catchy theme music, performed by the band The Chantes, and its stylish depiction of the detective profession. 77 Sunset Strip was also notable for its diverse cast, featuring actors from various backgrounds, including Ephraim Zimbalist Jar, Roger Smith, and Richard Kahn. The show's creators, Roy Huggins and Leonard Freeman, aimed to create a dynamic and engaging series that would appeal to a wide audience. Despite its success, 77 Sunset Strip faced criticism for its portrayal of violence and its perceived glamorization of the detective profession. Some critics argued that the show perpetuated harmful stereotypes and contributed to a culture of vigilantism. Nevertheless, the series remained popular throughout its run, and its impact on popular culture can still be seen today. In the end, 77 Sunset Strip was a groundbreaking TV series that pushed the boundaries of what was possible on television. Its tragic loss of Dennis Taylor and its controversial themes did not diminish its significance or its enduring legacy. No, 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 no. come on, serious. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm serious. You want me to talk to this woman? Okay. Did you enjoy the 1958 TV series 77 Sunset Strip? We'd love to hear about your experiences and memories related to this classic show. How did it impact you personally or influence your perspective on cinema? Perhaps you were captivated by the stylish detective work of private investigators Stu Bailey and Jeff Spencer, or maybe you were drawn to the vibrant depiction of 1950s Los Angeles. Whatever your connection to 77 Sunset Strip, we'd love to hear from you. If you enjoyed this trip down memory lane, please consider liking and sharing this post with your friends and followers. And don't forget to subscribe for more explorations of classic cinema. Together, we can celebrate the enduring legacy of 77 Sunset Strip and the impact it has had on generations of viewers. So, let's hear your stories and memories. We can't wait to read them. Have a seat. I don't think it'll take too long.